Indian leaders love to flaunt India as a digital economy. But for this digital economy to thrive, India must ensure to reduce the digital divide and access to internet for all. A recent report by the Human Rights Watch and Internet Freedom Foundation has found that the digital discrimination has led to people losing their livelihoods. In no internet means no work, no pay, no food, Human Rights Watch and Internet Freedom Foundation find that internet shutdowns in India are often unwarranted, unaccounted for and deny basic rights to those poor and marginalized people that the Digital India project ironically seeks to uplift. The 82-page report documents in detail how India's arbitrary internet shutdowns impact people's rights to food, work, education and healthcare, are enabled by Indian state and law and run contrary to India's international legal obligations. In this video today, we shall discuss more about this report from the people who worked on it. The report shows that the daily wage labourers associated with the MG Narega program are the worst affected due to lack of internet. We also speak with Rajat Mishra, a journalist who has covered Narega scheme from ground for months. But first, let me give some basic introduction on why this issue needs to be discussed today. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Zishan Kaskar and you are watching The Wire. The report highlighting how the digital divide causes loss of pay and work comes amid a 50-day ongoing internet shutdown in the Indian northeastern state of Manipur. India has anyway been the world internet shutdown capital since 2018, recording the most number of internet shutdowns by any democracy. A prominent focus of no internet is the impact the internet shutdowns have on India's poor and marginalized people especially as the Digital India project makes internet access essential for accessing subsidized food, rural employment schemes and e-governance assistance in rural areas. Internet shutdowns make it impossible for beneficiaries to receive their rations due to linkage with Aadhaar, a biometric database system. If these shops are in rural areas, the problems grow manifold. The internet connectivity in Indian villages is still not up to the mark. Without the internet, many poor people fail to get the food grains. Similarly, the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, which is the Mandrega, a government scheme that guarantees 100 days of employment to rural households at minimum wages, has become more dependent on the internet now that laborers must log in their attendance and receive payments online. The report shows how the government has suspended internet to curb out dissent and protests. While governments often claim that they suspended internet services in order to maintain public order, experts say there is no evidence to back that claim. In fact, no internet notes that the Indian government does not maintain data on internet shutdowns in the country and that a 2021 parliamentary committee affirmed the lack of data behind the assertion that internet blackouts are effective in countering terrorism or maintaining law and order. The report also notes how district magistrates may suspend internet under section 144 with zero accountability or oversight mechanisms in place to prevent misuse of power. The arbitrary nature of these shutdowns has affected Kashmir more than any other state. Internet services were limited to 2G in Kashmir during the COVID-19 lockdown and were too slow for online classes to function or graduate students to attend conferences. Moreover, there was a 550-day lockdown period in Kashmir. The lockdown made it difficult for healthcare personnel to travel across Kashmir and keep rumors in check through websites, as 2G speeds were too slow to open them. There was complete chaos. Even when the internet was restored to 2G, it was too slow. Kashmiris did not have access to journals or libraries. My experience in writing this report, in researching uh, this report, uh, which was uh, authored by IFF and Human Rights Watch, uh, was, was rather incredible. We traveled to Haryana and Rajasthan on two separate occasions where we spoke to so many people. Uh, I think like I've been working on shutdowns for the past couple of years, but even then I did not understand what the magnitude of the problem really is. My initial understanding of it is, was that internet shutdowns would only affect those living in urban areas. But when we went to these villages, we spoke to people, we realized how aware people are of internet shutdowns and the consequences they cause even when a person is not using a mobile phone on their own they're still affected by shutdowns because as i mentioned earlier going to ration shops or availing wages and rega becomes impossible so so the report which internet internet freedom foundation and human rights watch have co-authored which was released on june 14th 
uh, broadly deals with two aspects. Uh, the first question we ask is, why is it that internet shutdowns are being imposed in India so often? And how, and how those shutdowns impact people? The second aspect of the report is how often internet is suspended. So we tabulate the number of shutdowns which have taken place since the judgment of the Supreme Court in rather the same. If I elaborate on the first part, uh, we have conducted extensive interviews across several states to understand how shutdowns are impacting people. One particular impact which we focused on is how welfare is being affected, how delivery of welfare in particular is being affected because of suspension of internet services. This is something which has not been considered by other reports previously. Most of the analysis on internet shutdowns has been on how it impacts speech. This is also something which we do consider. But we specifically elaborate on how, the, how welfare is not being uh, distributed when internet is suspended. We do deal with this in two ways. Uh, or uh, with, in two ways, the first aspect is uh, under the National Food Security Act. Uh, under this, ration can only be availed when the identity of the beneficiary is authenticated using a device which relies on mobile internet services. So what happens here is that whenever someone wants to avail ration, they have to approach their local ration vendor. There, the ration vendor uses their thumbprint to authenticate the identity of the beneficiary under the Aadhaar framework. Now, when in Rajasthan and in Haryana and in several other uh, states where when internet was suspended, the identity of the beneficiary could not be authenticate, authenticated. And several people could not access food because of this. The problem here is that offline modes of availing uh, social security from the government are being excluded in their entirety. Uh, which means when internet is suspended, you don't have other ways of accessing food, as I mentioned earlier, under the National Food Security Act and uh, wages under Mandrega. And this is uh, an incredibly big issue. Now, one thing which we've highlighted in the report is that the governments which are suspending internet services do not take into account these factors uh, before taking that decision. So they are not noticing the fact that several people are left remediless and they don't have social security uh, because of these actions. Uh, and that's broadly the first aspect of this report or, or of how social security is affected. The second aspect of this report is a tabulation of the number of shutdowns which have taken place in the country after Anurad Abbasin. Now, we've used the decision of the Supreme Court in Anurad Abbasin as the cutoff date because several changes happened after that. So, in Anurad Abbasin, where the Supreme Court was considering the legality of the shutdown in Jammu and Kashmir, they broadly held two things. One, that internet shutdowns should be proportionate. They should only be issued after following the legal processes and must be only issued when it's unavoidable. The second aspect that Supreme Court focused on is that internet shutdown orders should be published. Uh, as you would know in uh, Kashmir, uh, while internet was suspended repeatedly, the orders were not made available to the public. Even to the court, the orders were made available only while the proceedings were going on. Uh, and even then, I don't think all of the orders were available to the court. Now, Supreme Court, that's why I said that you must publish all the orders so that anyone who is aggrieved by these orders can challenge them uh, before their respective high courts or before the Supreme Court. And uh, what we wanted to examine here is whether these directions are being complied with. Uh, and our, our findings are to the contrary. Internet is suspended, is still suspended quite often. Uh, in fact, since Anuradha Basin, internet, internet has been suspended more often than before Anuradha Basin. Uh, especially in states such as Rajasthan. Uh, what's more is that uh, internet is suspended for reasons which are entirely extraneous to the uh, current legal standard. Section 5.2 of the Telegraph Act requires either a public emergency or a threat to public safety before it is suspended. But as we have noticed, internet is being suspended even for uh, other reasons such as preventing cheating in exams or to respond to protests. Uh, and this is this is broadly what the report covers, but the report goes into a lot more details where uh, specific uh, testimonies of different people who have been affected is recorded. 
uh, and hence it's worth the read and uh, our hope is that it contributes to the ongoing discussion on uh, internet shutdowns. Uh, we have specific recommendations to the government to ensure that internet is not suspended as often as it is right now and that the impact is on impact on the most uh, vulnerable communities is reduced. Uh, our most important recommendation here is that whenever internet is suspended, uh, there should be a certain amount of judicial oversight which should take place. Currently, executive has unilateral authority in suspending internet services and there is absolutely no review process at all. There is a review committee which examines internet shutdown orders, but it can only record its findings and not even uh, overturn the order even if it thinks that the internet was suspended illegally. So our specific recommendation is that has judicial oversight so that internet is actually suspended only when it's unavoidable, as Supreme Court has said so in the Malanda Basin. Uh, now, beyond this... Uh... Other than that, we speak with Rajat Mishra. Rajat is a friend and also a business journalist who travelled across India for months to cover the Narega scheme. From him, we understand how lack of internet is causing problems to the rural workers of Narega. We, uh, like I as a reporter, went on a five five state trip to gauge the implementation of Manrega at the grassroots level. So we started from Rajasthan, travelled to UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, and ended our trip in Karnataka. So we picked up two districts in each state and tried to understand at the grassroots level how the implementation of Manrega is taking place. So uh, there are certain provisions under the Manrega Act. The one amongst them is that it's a demand-driven scheme. So uh, if people are demanding work, they will be allocated work. But in certain pockets or in certain areas of the villages across five states that we visited, uh, people were not demanding work but because there was no sensitization as such. So at Panchayat Bhavan, there is a norm that there should be a form should be kept so that people can go and fill the form. But people don't know that the forms are kept at Panchayat Bhavan. So there is a lack of sensitization as to they have de to demand the work. That is number one. Secondly, there is a provision that if someone is asking for the work and he is not able to get the work in the stipulated time of 15 days, he is entitled to get the unemployment allowance. So unemployment allowance is a kind of the burden that the state has to pay from its own pocket. But if you will see across the states, there is no trend amongst any state, those who have shelled out unemployment allowance. So that means that on officially, there are no such cases where people are demanding work, but they are not getting it. But if you will go to the grassroots level, there are villages where no Manrega work has happened since last five years. I can recall an uh, area of Chauhan in the Barmer district, where the work of Manrega has not taken place in last four, three years. People are demanding work. They are sitting on the protest, but they are not getting the work. And uh, not getting the work is also uh, there is a reason behind that why uh, the government officials or the government is little uh, is not very active in providing work because there is a backlog of the material payment so uh, manrega has two manrega has two objectives one is to provide the employment to the rural people and secondly to build the durable assets assets can be in the form of the roads in the form of the buildings in the form of the wells ponds whatever so uh, durable assets are not built so in order to build these assets, we obviously require materials, cement, stones, etc. So there are local contractors who are providing those materials. Their payment, there is a payment backlog of more than one year, in some cases two years. That material contractors have not got the payment. So they are also averse and they are also skeptical in providing the material further because there is no certainty as to when they are going to get their payment. Secondly, there is another provision for the people that, that the per person has to be given the work in the radius of five kilometers of his residence. So if the work is provided beyond five kilometers, that means that the uh, that the government has to pay the traveling allowance as well. But traveling allowance is nowhere in the picture. There is a debate. I, I traveled across the states. I spoke to the BDO, Block Development Officer. There is also a sort of a, a contention as to how we should measure the five kilometer pathway. What is the criteria to measure the five kilometers? Like in Rajasthan, in a hilly terrain, uh, people say that we are from uh, outside the five kilometer radius, but the BDO says that we measure the aerial distance. So uh, aerial distance is five kilometer, but by road, it's more than five kilometers. So there is not any uniformity about that. That is also one of the aspects. 
another problem we also know that there the protests were going on at the jantar mantar since last many few months uh, manrega workers across the country is gathered at jantar mantar just to register their protest against the nmms national mobile monitoring system earlier what used to happen is that at the work site there was a mustrol generated for the laborers there was a mate who was designated to take the attendance of the people offline and uh, there is a there, there is a kind of a thing that people work from 6 to 11 because it's quite not the scorching heat is heat is not present at that time so they work to 6 to 11 and they go to other sites to do some additional work and to get some additional money uh so now uh, that offline thing is gone from the work site where the number of the workers is more than 20 so that uh, attendance has to be taken through the national mobile monitoring system where you your uh, the manrega laborers picture is geo tagged twice in in a that work shift so you have to be present there for uh, two times and that photo is uploaded now i travel to certain blocks even officers were complaining about the patchy internet even at that time when there were the pilot projects were being done and conducted many manrega laborers were losing out on their daily wages because their attendance was not taking place because of a very pathetic condition of a network now second problem with nmms is a mate who has to handle all this technological intervention is, just, is sometimes she is fifth class pass in bihar i came across a lady who was mate uh, she was illiterate she didn't know how to read and write so that was a very moving story for me because that mate was not able to read and write so she didn't know how to read the mustrol and she was supposed to take the offline attendance so she used to call her daughter from 15 kilometers far away from the work site who was studying in 10th class from bicycle she used to come and just to take the attendance on mother's behalf so there are mate who are illiterate there are mate those who don't have any cell phone smartphone so that was also a big challenge so as far as internet shutdown is concerned if you will travel across uh, various pockets of various states one big challenge is the connectivity of internet in fact in releasing the payments of the contractors the, the that internet plays a huge role one block development officer was telling that sometimes when the payment release calendar comes up and the state government informs that we will be releasing payment today all bureaucrats travels to the city headquarters because in the rural areas there is a very patchy internet and they know certainty that the window will be open for 3 minutes and they will be able to get their payment so that is a big problem and i would like to quote one bureaucrat who on the condition of anonymity told that the government is thinking that technolo technological intervention will solve all the problems but that is not the case so technological intervention is also creating a kind of a divide amongst people and making this policy implementation much more difficult so You heard what the impact of the digital divide is on the marginalized people, on the people to whom access to internet is still a privilege. As the end of the video comes near, another report has caught our attention. It says that India has lost more money in six months of 2023 from internet suspensions than it did in the whole of 2022. Business Standard had reported after studying the data from the global tracker Top 10 VPN. According to this data the total economic impact of these shutdowns in India has reached rupees 2091 crore in just first half of 2023 in contrast the total cost of internet shutdowns for all of 2022 was 1510 crore rupees this goes to show that there is also a financial impact of having no internet so that's it from me in this report my name is Ishan Kaskar and you were watching the wire To receive instant updates on all videos from the wire click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon pay to support independent journalism click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay